In today's tutorial, let's do a hot hibiscus tea cozy, and this is really super cute using the Jacob's Ladder concept. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do a hot hibiscus tea cozy. This is something I've seen on Yarnspirations for quite some time and I was wondering how hard it was and I was kind of avoiding it because I was kind of scared of it. So today I actually did a sample last night just to see if I could do this and I realized a few things. So you know never judge a pattern by its look. So let me uh, just take you through the ins and outs of doing this project. It's actually a lot more simpler than you would realize and uh, once you get that under your belt um, it's actually quite an easy pattern to be able to follow. So you might be surprised. Let's begin. So let's quickly talk about this pattern. So here we have the cozy. This is not a complete round project. So this is the interesting thing about it. I thought that we were going to have to go in it there and then leave some holes for the spout and the handle but the absolutely not. So what this is is that when I pull up a sample that I have already done it's actually made up of two particular pieces that are sewn together and when you sew them together you leave a hole for the actual spout and then you leave a hole on the other side. So when I've done this, this is actually one half of the tea cozy and it's got the Jacob's Ladder concept going on here in order to create the braiding look that it has. So every two rows, you can see that there's two rows here is a same color and then you can change it. But of course you can change as often or as little as you wish when it comes to your own personal creativity. The Jacob's Ladder that you're seeing here is actually made up of two strands at the same time. So if I just grab these two here, I work with them together and I grab the next two which are purple and I come up and I pull through like this. So even though there's two strands of every one of these things, um, this makes it a lot quicker to be able to follow by just doing a chain work and then it becomes a lot easier. Also what happens is on this particular pattern is that we have to grow it up a certain size and then we start tapering in. So if you look at this particular example you can see it's nice and fat here down at the bottom but then it starts to taper. This is so easy to master. It's not even funny because when you look at the pattern on the information if you know how to read patterns great but if you don't there is a diagram on showing you how to reduce in the final six revolutions to do it. So you have to determine your teapot size whether it's a four cup or a six uh, cup and then make it to match. Remember when you go to do this when you go to do the Jacob's Ladder it's gonna start contracting onto each, uh, each other. So see how wide it is here? It was that wide until I did this and because it's tapering at the top it's going to be able to just kind of go around your pot just like this so it's going to be able to follow. So let's uh, go through this pattern and I'm going to do the second side of it. So you have to do two si uh, samples of this and then we're going to then uh, strategically sew it together to leave the hole in for the spout and the handle. So let's look quickly at this diagram. This is chart number one. This is going to be for about four inches when it comes to doing all of the um, the one size that I was doing. So I decided that I was doing a four cup teapot and so you can see in the instructions here as you go to do it is that we are just going to keep repeating the rows up until you get either four inches I should move it up at four inches here in order for before you start the taper but if it's a six uh, cup then it will be five inches. So you just keep doing the same thing that you see here up until either four inches or five and then you start picking it up here to do the final taper in the last six revolutions. This taper allows it to cup around the top of the teapot. So here is the top of the teapot here. This does not attach to anything. So let me just move that up. So this doesn't attach to anything. It just sits directly on top to keep that teapot nice and warm for when you got company. So let's uh, begin and let's grab your five millimeter size H crochet hook today and we're also going to be using Lily Sugar and Cream yarn today. Use as little or as much as as you want. I have to say I barely touch this ball. Um, these patterns don't take a lot of yarn at all so if you have spare yarn and cotton lying around you probably can get away with it and if you don't um, a beautiful color mix of really great colors of Lily Sugar and Cream are available to you online or at your local retailer. So as mentioned there's two different panels and this is one side of the teapot. The other side I'm about to do here on camera. Obviously I just tested it. So on the outside here we have it here and it will start to taper as we get closer to the top and here's the base. So this basically at this point we have it so that it's marked um, that you can see what's going on in this particular project. Now on the instructions if you would have noticed that I wrote red was the final and red was the final color to get my four inches in the height before I started tapering and I made a note of that because I want to do a second one of these but 
you know I want it to make it look like it's consistent. So I'm gonna start with the same colors keeping this sample done and these are the same colors that's recommended in the pattern as well if you're confused at any point. But just have fun with the colors. You can you uh, do a great job with it. What I'd recommend is that wait until the very end before you're doing your Jacob's Ladder of course and I just did it here for a sample to show you how all of these strands end up turning into that concept in the end. So let's grab our yarn now hot pink and let's begin. And just one more thing before we uh, continue just letting you know it says chain 29 or 36. So 29 is the four uh, uh, cup teapot and 36 is the six cup. So what you wanna do is every time you see that there's a parenthesis here you have to make sure you're following the instructions that matches all of your um, desires that you have. So every time there's a decision to be made, be made you can see that it's in parentheses just like so. So just watch this one. We are going to do the four cup one. So I am going to be doing chaining of 29. So I'm beginning with hot pink first and I am going to be chaining 29 as I just stated. So let's put that onto the hook. Remember that never counts as one. So one, two, three, four and five. Go all the way to 29 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. So as we begin to do all of these instructions, let me just turn it around. You're gonna notice that the side edge will have three single crochets in a row before you're doing any of the chain work. In the very beginning right here is that there's only a skipping of one chain and we're gonna create this chaining of 10 and then just go over to the second one over. And so in between and the regular one here before we do the taper, there's always gonna be six single crochets here, okay? and then it jumps over one and then again another chain of ten and then another six. So just pay attention that you have three on the edge and then in between all of this there's only gonna be six. That just helps you keep in pattern. So let's go second chain from the hook. So one and two and just turn it around and get the back loop only of the chain and I want you to single crochet in that one plus single crochet in two more chains in there to give you your three that are on the edge. So now we're gonna start the Jacob's Ladder concept right away. So every time we're doing the chains, no matter where you are in the project, it never changes. These chains are always chaining of 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So on the chain down, we come down, skip over, and go to the second one over and single crochet. And we single crochet in that one plus five more of its best friends. So go in another five in a row. So that gives you a total of six of single crochets. And you're gonna continue to repeat this all the way to the other side of this same concept and you'll end up with four Jacob's Ladder concepts. So one, two, three, and four, and five, and six. So now that you got six in here, chain another ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Coming back down on the chain, skip one, second chain over, begin to single crochet again, and then five more of its best friends. So five more in a row, so it gives you a total of six. So this is two, and three, four, five, and six and carry on again. So just now you're gonna do another Jacob's Ladder. So this is the third time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Coming back down, skip one chain, go to the second over for another single crochet. And then five more of its best friends again. So you just do a total of six again. And now we have one more Jacob's Ladder to do once we get these six done. So this is three and four, five and six. And the final Jacob's Ladder, so then another ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Coming back down on the chain, skip one, go to the second over for a single crochet and if you're got, keeping in count there's only two after this anyway and that gives you your final three on the edge which is what you should have. So there every uh, two rows is the same color so this is considered one row of using pink. So we're gonna turn around and do the second row. So watch how we do it. So chain up one first and you're gonna single crochet in each of the beginning three. So one, two, 
and three and once you get those three another Jacob's Ladder. So ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Skip over and go right directly for the six that are next after the Jacob's and go into the first one. So, so six in a row, a single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and then Jacob's ladder again. So ten in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, skip over the, that whole Jacob's there. Go into the first single crochet on the other side. Do that one plus the five other ones. So you have six again. So for this particular size you're gonna go four inches tall doing this exact same row that I'm showing you now. You're just gonna continue to build. The only difference is that you change the color every every two rows. So next uh, this is Jacob's. So 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Skipping over. Okay and then go into the first Jacob or sorry first single crochet. That one plus five others. So the reason why I'm taking you through this whole row because I'm gonna show you how to change the color without having any loose ends hanging out of your work because if you're serving um, tea you certainly don't want loose ends hanging out of your teapot because then it becomes a conversational piece instead of the hot gossip of the town. So begin again. So you're gonna chain 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and then come back in and the final on the other side is only three left. So this is what I'm gonna do to show you to um, how to finish and we'll bring up our next color. In my case it's gonna be the hot purple. So this is what I'm gonna do to finish. So I'm just gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut this pink yarn about, hmm, about six inches and I'm just gonna pull that yarn through that loop. Okay that kinda locks it already. So I wanna turn my work and get my hot purple ready for me and the hot purple I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna create a slip knot first and put it onto the hook and all I'm just gonna do is that see this straggler here just lay it down on top of the line so it's like it's part of it going into the very first one. Take the yarn that's going to the yarn ball and just put it over to do a slip stitch to fasten on. Chain one and these two stragglers I want you to leave them down on top of the line. So just single crochet into that first one. So one and keep going the next two. Okay and you're back at a Jacob's Ladder. But now what you can do is that you can safely trim that yarn now right here. Okay the, don't trim the one you're working on. Just trim the ones that are you just changed to and now it's buried underneath and you will not see it. So now you can begin Jacob's again. So 10, this 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and then just go to the other side of the, that chain and do your um, next six in a row. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 six and continue to do that same idea. So 10 in a row, the next 6, 10, 6 and then uh, 10 and then the final is gonna be 3. Turn around, go back in the other direction like I just showed you and then when you get back to the other side you're gonna change your yarn out again. So you basically go down and back and then change. Down and back and then change and you keep changing your colors in order for you to get to the look that you see here. So I'm gonna go a total of four inches tall and so just grab your measuring tape and just do it. Mine happens to be at the red. By the time I hit the red that was my four inches. You may have different tension than me but I'm gonna continue to do the rest now off camera and I'll meet you back when I get my four inches tall and then I'll show you how to do the tapering at the top. So now back here and I just finished four inches in the height and as I told you I mentioned that red was my final before I start doing the taper process. So this is what it's gonna look like almost like a rainbow and you can see all the chain work in between which is all the Jacob's Ladder and then when you pull it down here this is what we're aiming for here. So off camera I finished this here and I did the final two revolutions that locks in the top loops in order to continue and I kept the color scheme accurate. So after blue I then did green. So what 
what I'm gonna do now the next six rows is that we're going to start the tapering effect and this is going to allow it to come together and you can really see it on the back side here as we start reducing stitches here and here in order to create the round shape. So when you're looking at it from a teapot point of view you will see that this will kind of wrap around the top of the teapot just like so because you are doing the taper. So let's begin starting to do the tapering process. So let's begin and I'm going to create a slip knot and I'm starting like I normally would as if I wasn't tapering right on the very end and I've already taken care of my red here and I'm going to insert in and attach as I normally would with the slip stitch and chain one. And so in round, round number one or row number one here of the taper we are going to then continue along on the side edge as normal. So there will be three into the side. So that's not gonna be a change. What's gonna be a change in uh, row number one will be in between the Jacob's ladders itself in these, in these uh, six single crochets. So I remember what I said in the very beginning the chaining of ten never ends at any point and never gets lower. So what we want to do is that we're gonna do the Jacob's now and of the chaining of ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So the tapering is gonna happen in the first set of six here and each one of the sets of six as we go. So what we're gonna do then is that the first two are going to be single crochets as normal. So one and two and then one the next two are gonna come together. So we're gonna do uh, single crochet two together. So going in pulling it through leave it on the hook going into the next one and I want to pull through pull through all three loops. So two just became one and so then we're just gonna single crochet the final two that are left and we're gonna move on that way. So let's do the another chain ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Coming all the way across then to the other side single crochet into this one and to its buddy the next one I mean and the next two are gonna be come together. So just in, pull through, going into the next one, pull through, pull through all three loops. Those two just became one and then finish off the next, the last two. Then let's start again. So chain ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Okay, skip over, get to the next group of ten, uh, six which is the final group of six. Go into the first one, then go into the second one as normal and so then the next two become together. And then the final two just become one each. One and two and then do the final chain ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten and then we simply come in to the other side and then we single crochet the final three that are left. So one, two, and three so we don't do any decreasing on the edge at this particular section. So now we've just eliminated one stitch out of each of the betw uh, between here on the sixes and so let's move up to row number two of doing the decrease. Let's turn our work and we are going to begin row number two. So row number two is gonna have a decrease not only here but also in the chain six area. So we're gonna decrease one out of the side. So let's begin we're gonna uh, chain one and single crochet into the first one and the next two that are left here on the edge are gonna be come together. So just put those two together for a single crochet two together and so now you only have two stitches technically on the end. So let's do our chaining of ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Let's go to our first group of five now that are left. We are going to single crochet into the first two. So one and two and the next two are gonna be come together then. So let's put those next two together and we only have one stitch left and we're just gonna single crochet into that one. Okay, pretty easy right? So let's begin again. So chain ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Come to the other side. Here's the next group of five. So the first two will be two double or two single crochets each. Sorry, one single crochet each in the two and then the next two are together and then the final one is by itself. And chain ten again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten 
and then coming to the next group of five. So the first two are single crochets each. So one and two. The next two are together. And then there's gonna be one final one by itself. And then I go for another one here. So it's gonna be ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And you're on the final edge. So the first two are gonna be come together. So we're gonna put those together and then there's one stitch left and that will be one single crochet. That's it for this pink. So we're gonna just fasten this pink off. This is row number two and we're just gonna finish that off and we're gonna turn our work and then begin the next color and we're gonna continue to taper. So let's bring up purple. Okay, let's bring in purple here. On row number three there's no decreasing at all. We need to give it time to taper because if you taper too quickly then it will get to the um, the brim too top uh, or too uh, quickly of the teapot and it will not sit on there properly. So we're gonna join as I told you before and uh, chain one and single crochet into the first one and into the next one again hiding in these loose ends. So there's only two single crochets left in this um, side area. I'm making sure I'm getting these stragglers down on top so that I can hide them and then I can safely trim them out after. So let's uh, begin to chain ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Continuing across there's only four stitches left here. You're just gonna do one single crochet into each. So there's no decreasing on this round but we need to give the project time to relax and to take its proper shape. Okay, so let's move, keep moving. So chain ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Coming back into the next one over here and just one single crochet into each one of the four that are left. So one, two, three, and four. And continue along, chain ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And just go into the next one here, the next four. So one, two, three, and four. And then finally chaining of ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Coming on to the edge, there's only two left and so you just one uh, single crochet in each, each of those. Let's turn our work and we're now going to go for row number four. In row number four we're gonna do another decrease. So let's turn our work right away. So on the edge nothing is gonna change. We're not gonna decrease at all. Row number, uh, row number four. So chain up one, one single into each of the two that are left. Now chain ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we're gonna decrease once again here in the middle and so the first one is gonna be a regular single crochet. The next two are gonna come together and then the final one left is one single crochet. Let's do it again. So chain ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Skip to the next one. The first one is a single crochet. The next two are together and the next one is one by itself. So you really see the tapering really taking effect here. So let's do it again. So chain ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Skipping over, go into the first one. The next two are together. Okay, and then one single crochet into the final. And then finally we're gonna go right to the edge. So we're gonna chain uh, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And on this round, our row here, the final two that are left is just gonna be one into each. So there's no decrease on the edge. So let's uh, get rid of this purple again so that we've gone two rows of that. So we're just gonna trim that and the ones that are hanging out before I can get rid of that as well. So let's move along and we're gonna go for uh, row number five. So let's start row number five. Create another slip knot and let's begin. And let's start right where the purple is. So row number five there's no decreasing at all. So we're just gonna work our way across. There's no nothing to decrease so chain up one 
and one single into the first one and into its buddy to the next one. So this is giving more time for the project to relax and now that that's out you can either just, I would just trim out, uh, trim this out now. It just keeps out of your face and it's out of your way. And let's continue. So let's chain up 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, continuing over to the purple here. There's only three stitches there and so they're only gonna get one single crochet into each. So there's no decreasing at all. Okay, and let's try again. So chain 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Continuing along, just the next three are going to be one singles each, no decrease. And then let's chain 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, skip over, just single crochet into the next three. So 1, 2, and 3. And let's go again. So chain 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And you're on the edge. The final two are gonna be one single crochet each. So let's turn and work and let's do row number six. And row number six is be the final point of doing these Jacobs and then the Jacobs are done and then we're gonna have to put those together. So we're gonna do the final decrease for the Jacobs area. So we're gonna chain up one and the first two are gonna come together. So just coming, bringing those together as one and now chain a total of 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So we have three stitches that are left here. We're gonna make those into one. So we're gonna do three together single crochet. So go into the first one, pull through, go into the next one, pull through and go into the final one, pull through. You'll have four loops on your hook, pull through all of them and that just became one. Let's do another 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Okay, and these three are gonna become one. So in, pull through, into the next one, pull through, into the final one, pull through, four loops on the hook, pull through all of them. Chain 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then continue to the next one, put those three together. And then chain 10 again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and you've got the final two that are in the edge. We're gonna put those two together. So you essentially at the top of each one of these just became one and that makes a difference in, in the next part. So let's fasten this off and I need to show you what to do next because now we're gonna start doing the Jacob's Ladder effect of putting these all together in order to create the loops and I'll show you how to do that next. So now it's time to do the Jacob's Ladder effect. We have to do this before we do the next row because we need to get these all secured because the next row holds that permanently into position so they don't unravel. So what happens here is that you got four of them to do and we need to start. So we're gonna start with the pink. Just hold it straight up and take the purple and there's two stri uh, strings so keep them together and then take the next two purple, keep them together and push them through the underside of the pink and pull up. And you're gonna notice this is gonna contract. So now look and take the next two blues, okay, and just pull that through the purple. You get that? And just kind of pull it now nice and tight. And now take the green, pull those through the blue. And you're gonna work up all the way like this. I love this part of the process. And you're gonna do this with all four of them. And you're just gonna let it hang open when you get to the top and we're almost done to the top now and just keep grabbing each set of blue or each set of these chains. So what I uh, loved about this pattern is that we've done other Jacob's Ladder where you have to single crochet across a chain. It takes forever. I like how they put two chains together in order to speed up the process of making this teapot cover. So just keep on going right to the top. and take the final two blue and pull them through and just let those hold and let those stay out of the way. Okay, so you can see that it just did a nice 
uh, taper here. So take the next set, uh, set here. I'm not gonna show this whole process again but just take the next set just holding it open and taking the purple through the underside of it and then just start looping all of the, the groups of colors through in order to make the braid going straight up. So please do that and I will meet you here. So just leave them open uh, so that they're ready for you at the top just like this one. So this is what it looks like. You can see it compressed in. It did the tapering look and that's exactly what we wanted and this is what it looks like on the back. So now I have two of these and I'm going to then do the final two rows. So remember what we had in the last uh, row is that we had one basically single crochet onto each of them here. So that's what we're gonna be playing with this time. So we're gonna start off right on the edge and let's see where that blue is right where I finished off. I left it hanging so I knew where I was going and so I'm gonna insert into the top of the first single crochet that's there. It's the only one that's there and I'm going to attach and I'm gonna hide my yarn in as nor nor I normally would. So now what I want to do is that I want to grab the blue that is popping up through here. Okay so just uh, grabbing them and I want to put two single crochets around that loop. This is gonna hold it from unraveling. So two singles in there just like there and then I'm going to go, there's only one single crochet here so I'm gonna go one single crochet there and then I'm gonna pull up the next blue loops. Okay so just adjust them if you have to and make sure that they're open and two singles into that one. Okay the next single is right here and then the next one is the next blue loops. Your loops could be a different color. Okay and then the next single crochet here and then the next blue loops that are here just pulling it up. So one and two and there's gonna be one single crochet right on the edge and you're just gonna go into that one. So that was the second last row. So you can see that the blue loops are now being held into position. So let's do the final uh, uh, one that we have to do and so we're going to then chain up one, one single crochet into the first one and we're gonna do two together all the way across. So into this one and the next one bring it together and keep doing that and grabbing all these single crochets and make them into get into one. So this is gonna cre uh, create the final tapering look at the top of the teapot. Just like this and this will leave a hole uh, as well in the top of the teapot. And so once you get that done just single crochet all the way to the very end of just two together. And that's it. So let's uh, just finish that yarn off and I wanna leave a little bit of extra because I got nowhere to hide that next time. So what I want to do is that I wanna pull it through and I'm gonna slap a, a, a needle onto it and I'm gonna bury it right now. So I'm gonna grab my teapot next in order to, for me to measure and I'm gonna show you my way of measuring. You can either use the instructions if you don't have your teapot handy or you can just customize it towards your teapot. And I went to um, a second hand shop this morning to uh, pick up a teapot in order to do this. And uh, uh, Daniel and I rarely have company but these are really kind of a cool, uh, cool little accessory. I love color. Uh, it was one of the reasons why I jumped onto this tutorial because I do love a lot of color in my home if you've uh, seen any of my tutorials in the past. So we're just hiding in these loose ends. Hide in any other loose ends that you have because the next part of the process we're gonna put it together and then we're gonna go through making the top after that. Okay the next part of this tutorial you can either follow the instructions on where to sew or you can customize it and what I would do turn it inside out and attach it to the outside of your current teapot that you are working with. Okay so this is what it will look like when it's on but I want you to turn it inside out and I want you to put two layers on there so that the seam is right at the spout here and then the other seam is here at the handle. And what I want you to do is that I want you to put them both so that they're inside out and I want you to turn it and let's do the handle first. So we need to know where exactly this handle is so that we can get this cover on and I would recommend cutting four pieces of spare string for you and I would just roughly measure up and align up the color. So right around this purple here is where the handle is gonna start directly underneath and so I would use this spare strand to pull across and tie it with the bow tie in order for you to kind of join it together. This is just a holding spot so that you can take it off of this project 
and using your darning needle and sew up confidently. So this is where I wanna stop so I can leave room for that handle to peek out afterwards. So I'm just gonna create a little bow tie here so that I can stop that. Okay, so let's just line it up properly. So I can sew now from the top to this part here and now I'm gonna look underneath and I'm gonna do it at the purple right underneath. And that's where I'm gonna join it. So it just happens to be the bow purple. I don't know if that's a miracle or whether it's just a fluke. So it just happens to be my little teapot today. So now I safely can rest assured that the handle will not be <laughs> accidentally sewn across. Nothing's worse than sewing your project and then realizing that stuff that's supposed to go through <laughs> is not going through because you didn't leave a big enough hole. Okay, so let's turn it around and let's do the top of the next section here. And so let's pulling it straight across and let's leave a little gap for the teapot um, spout. Grabbing another piece of strand and this one is gonna be in the pink here. Pulling it through and through. This is how I do my yarn artistry too as far as customizing. Use spare pieces of string when possible and then go up underneath the spout. So the spout here, I don't mind if it comes out a little bit extra because that's where you're gonna have heat loss. So in this case I would go toward the blue down here. So once I have this done and the reason why I turn it inside out is that I can safely now sew on this side and then I can flip it inside out when I'm done in order to keep the seam lines um, on the inside of this project. So you can either leave it on or you can just slide it off. So this should slide off at this point. If it's not sliding off you know you're gonna be in trouble because you'll never get it off when you're doing the actual project. So let's keep it inside out and let's uh, begin and you don't have to do a lot of whip stitching here. There's not a lot of space left and let's begin. And what I would do is choose a color that's pretty much almost gonna match here. So I would probably choose the, the blue and just create an extra long piece of strand and grab your darning needle and you're gonna do this with all of them. I'm only gonna show it one time because I don't need to show it all the time here because the concept's the same. So right where I've started the, the tie is this I just wanna go through enough strands to keep this seam on this side of the project so I don't wanna make it bleed onto the other side too much. So what I wanna do on the other side of the strand is create a slip knot and insert the, the hook through the slip knot. I'm gonna try that again. The slip knot allows it to kinda tie onto itself so just slip it through, pull it through and get rid of this other one now that it's now out of, out of your way and you've already got the positioning in. So you can get rid of that strand out and I want you to whip stitch across so just coming across the project, see this straggler? Just let it stay down on top and just kinda trap it into position as you go up over top of it and therefore you won't have to deal with it later. So just working your way back toward the top of the project in this case and staying on the strands that will appear on this side of the teapot cover and go right to the top. So once you're at the top which is where I am now is that I'm gonna create a little mini knot and again staying on this side of the project so it doesn't appear on the other side. And then a great way to hide in the loose ends at the end is just to go in and out of the stitch work. Again staying on this side of the project don't let it bleed to the other side and go back and forth a total of three times in a row. So that was one and two. This is two and going back for a third time. And I want you to do this with every one of the seams that are left and then I'll join you back here and we're gonna just take a quick look at it and then we'll move on to the top of the project and then you can safely cut out all your loose ends like this. So if I take a quick look on the other side, see you don't even see it bleeding through. It's great. So let's uh, continue to do that and I'll see you at the um, next part of this tutorial. So just sew everything together and turn this back uh, outside right. Okay, so let's test my holder and I can see that there's a larger gap on one side here and there's probably a smaller little gap on this side. So the larger I would assume would be the handle. So now we can just slip it over top here like so. Put the handle in 
and there you go. So that would be what it would look like at this point. So what I appeared to me when I first started this is that it was all one unit but in actual fact it's two and the way that you sew it together looks really good. But we're not quite done yet. We want to do a top piece that will be a nice kind of hibiscus flower and that's coming up next in this part is, uh, of the tutorial. So now it's time to do the hibiscus flower and there is instructions with it but there's also a diagram which I love even better and this is what it's gonna look like and we're gonna use a total of green for this so we're not using any other colors but if you would like to change your colors that's completely optional to you. Lots are going on in this pattern but it's really not difficult if you just go piece by piece. How do you eat an elephant? Well just piece by piece of course. So this is one of those and that's just a saying by the way. <laughs> And uh, what we have here is let's just uh, go step by step into these instructions. Let me show you how to do it and let's grab your green and size H five millimeter crochet hook now to begin. So let's begin the hibiscus and let's just start off with a slip knot to begin and insert your hook and let's chain five. So we have one, two, three, four and five. Let's insert our hook into the beginning chain, yarn over and pull through and now you have the starting ring for making your flower. So let's begin the next part, round number one. So let's begin round number one. We're gonna chain up one first and then we're gonna put uh, 10 single crochets right into the center of the ring. So just going right into the center and single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Once you get your ten, I want you to join it. So if you're not sure where to join, just count back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So let me do it again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the tenth one back is the one that you're going to join to towards, okay? So now we can just safely cut that strand out if you were covering it over top as you went. Let's get that out of the way and let's move on to round number two. So we're gonna create picots in each one of the front loops only. If you're new to crochet, when there's two strands like this, that's a stitch. If you go into the strand that's closest to you, that's the front loop and the strand in behind the next one which is furthest from you is the back loop. In this case we are gonna play with front loops on this particular round. So let's uh, begin. We're going to chain one and we're gonna single crochet as the same stitch. Okay, so it's stitch. Did you hear that? But what I want you to do is that we have to go into a front loop only. Okay, so we go into the front loop of that same stitch. Okay, so just one strand and I want you to just single crochet and we're going to then chain three and we're gonna create what is called a pico. And these picots are kind of like just a fancy um, look. So you're gonna go one, two, and three. Okay, and do you see the two strands that are right here? They're kind of facing up. Slide your hook in behind those. Just slide in behind and grab the yarn and pull through those two little uh, strands and the one that's already on the hook. And that's a pico. It's gonna create a really nice lift. So you come into the next one and let's single crochet into the next one. So just going in, front loop only, single crochet and let's do another pico. So one, two, three and look down. See the two strands that are facing up? Right there. Just come through and through. Okay, go to the next one, front loop only. So just single crochet, chain three, one, two, and three, and then pico. Just go into the two that are sticking up and pull through and through. Please do that all the way around and you will have a total of ten of these uh, going all the way around because you had ten single crochets. I'll meet you at the end of this round. So once you get all the way back around just join it to the starting of the first uh, single crochet. So you should have a total count of 10 of these picots if you're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Let's move along and we're gonna go for round number three. So round number three we're starting in the wrong area so we have to finish off and it says to fasten off as well. So we're gonna finish that off right where we are and we're going to rejoin the same color yarn but in a different location. I'm just gonna leave the straggler down in. Uh, and what we need to do is that we need to go all the way around uh, this one here and I'm gonna create another slip knot and we need to look into where are we gonna go here and what do we do next. 
So now we're gonna create the leaves here on round number three and what I need you to do is that you need to turn around and go for the back loops of these same ones. Remember the picots were in the front loop? So you can just choose any one of the back loops to begin and of that same round. So you're not working with these picots, you're leaving them untouched and that's what we're going to, uh, going to do. So we're just gonna join on and chain one and single crochet into the same one. So you just gotta fold this work in front of you so that you can access and see everything you need to see. Chain into this one and now we have to chain 15 in order to create the first loop. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, 13, 14, and 15. Coming now to where that same one was attached we're gonna single crochet one more time in that one. So that brings that to a massive loop like this. So the next one, the next uh, back loop that you run into is just gonna be a single crochet by itself and then the next one here and what I would do is take this strand here and just bury it as you go. So just the next one you're gonna single crochet and then chain another 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Get that done, go into the exact same one and I'm going right over top of that other strand I wanna bury. So just to reiterate the next one is the next back loop is single crochet by itself and then the next one is gonna be another single crochet and then another loop. So you chain 15, come back into that same one. You will have a total of five of these massive loops hanging out at the end of this round. So please do that now. So at the end of the final chain 15 loop I did a single crochet and if you remember the first one starts off with just one single crochet and that's where you're just gonna join it and so then you have these massive loops just like so and you should have a total of five of them. So let's begin we're going to do the final revolution round number four which is probably a very easy round as well. So let's uh, begin and we are simply going to do 10 and go right to this chain 15 and do 10 double crochets right in a row. So let's just count those out together. So just going right around the loop itself. So 1 and 2, 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7, 8 9 and 10. So this is half of the um, leaf and now I want you to do another pico. So you remember how to do that? Chain 3, 1, 2, 3, coming into these two that are just leaning up and pull through and through. So there's your pico and now I want you to do 10 double crochets then on the other side. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So now I got 10 on the other side. So before I go any further, the single crochet that's in between these two massive loops, I want you to slip stitch only. So pull through and through and then begin again. So 10 double crochets going up pico and 10 back and then slip and then keep doing that and you have a total of five of these by the end of it. So please do that now. So when you get all the way back around what's gonna happen is on the final here you are just going to slip stitch to the first one that you had started with. So right down here into the single crochet and then you're just gonna fasten off. So you're going to notice at this particular point you're gonna have to use a darning needle to hide in the loose ends and I've shown you how to do that already on, tutorial, on this tutorial. So what's gonna happen is that you'll know, you will have noticed if you are like me is that you may have extra, see it's kind of bunched up here. So you just gotta just kind of shape it a little bit and get it to all balance here on the back end. See there's a lot of yarn there. So you just gotta kind of just stretch things, get it all back into balance. Happens you know, it's not a big deal. It should be expected as well. So just keep on just kind of uh, shaping it and getting it to the way it should look and then of course you can put it on the top of your teapot. So I'm gonna hide in this loose end and I'm then gonna take a look at what it looks like then on the top of the teapot and I'm pretty excited about it. So here's the top of my teapot like so. This item here 
the top just sits on top just as a covering list like this. It's just more decorative and then if you want to go use your teapot then of course this is just kind of fi filling in that final hole that's in the top and really kind of a nice idea and it's really kind of a neat uh, accessory to have and I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's really quite cool and I'm proud to add this to my little collection of fun little trinkets upstairs. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great afternoon and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.